first live local good day oregon starts now on fox 12 oregon Another mass shooting, this one happening in downtown Portland. What we know so far about the eruption of gunfire that left at least eight people injured. Plus, we love enjoying the great outdoors here in the Pacific Northwest, but wildfires are putting a halt on some of those activities. Now, some local recreation groups stay prepared just as fire season ramps up. Good morning. We thank you for starting your Saturday with us. Today is July 17th. I'm Deborah Gill. We'll check in with meteorologist Jeff Forgeron in just a minute. But first, we begin with breaking news of a mass shooting in downtown Portland. Police tell us at least eight people were injured, with one suffering life-threatening wounds. In this shooting on Southwest 3rd, Fox News' Marilyn Deutsch is there at the scene this morning. Marilyn, what can you tell us? Yeah, this happened about 2 a.m. on Southwest 3rd. Right now, Southwest 3rd is cordoned off between Oak and Washington, and we expect it to be like this for several hours as police conduct their investigation. And most of that investigation centers around the street right in front of the food cart. And we were able to talk to somebody who heard those gunshots. He was actually in his car at the time, and this is what he said. I was in my car. Uh, when the shooting happened, I ducked down once I heard heard shots. I'm not going to lie, you know, I was scared. It's just sad that this is the world we live in now. Yeah, officers here in Central Precinct say uh, they got a call to the scene about 2 a.m. this morning, uh, hearing that a number of people had been shot. When they got here, they applied life-saving measures and secured the area for paramedics. Again, eight people taken to local hospitals, one with uh, very serious life-threatening injuries. Uh, we know victims in this case are both male and female. Uh, we don't know anything more about what led up to the shootings. Uh, we know there are a number of clubs in this area, and um, but we don't know if the shooting is related. The shootings, I should say is related to that but again they did happen in front of those food carts and uh, the man we just talked to uh, told me the food carts were open at the time and then closed shortly after the shooting live in downtown portland maryland deutsch good day oregon Marilyn, thank you. We're also getting breaking news now in the newsroom. Portland police are on the scene of a homicide investigation. Started out as a shooting with a weapon call just before 6.30 this morning off Northeast Sandy and 113th Avenue. All we know right now is detectives left the downtown shooting area to this area here in Northeast Portland. We are working to get you more information. All right, now here's meteorologist Jeff Wardron. Well, it is a very cloudy morning along the coast. We're tracking areas of drizzle inland. We're seeing partly cloudy skies east of the Cascades. It's a mostly sunny but smoky morning out there. Here's a quick time lapse from our Stoller family estate camera in Dayton. A great view of Mount Hood in the distance and some beautiful colors as well as that sun rose off to the left-hand portion of your screen. Quick update regarding the bootleg fire. We saw intense activity again yesterday afternoon and evening. In fact, we're going to have a pretty impressive satellite loop to show you here in a little while. Uh, this fire has scorched over 273,000 acres, 22 percent contained. We are expecting the wind to pick up later on today. The smoke forecast is not looking good for portions of central and eastern Oregon. We'll cover that coming up here in a little bit. Deb, back to you. It's hard to see, you know, Oregon by Oregon, the green forests, you know, look like burnt matches. Right now, there are nearly two dozen active wildfires burning across the state. This is a look at some of the notable ones. In total, they cover nearly 324,000 acres. That's more than 500 square miles. And the majority of the scorched earth is coming from two megafires, the Snake River Complex, and that's on the left. It's burning Oregon, Washington, and Idaho meat. It's made up of three fires that converged, all started by lightning. And in about a week's time, it grew to more than 103,000 acres, but it's still not the biggest fire. That would be the bootleg fire burning in Klamath County in southern Oregon. You see that one there on your right. It now covers an area larger than New York City. It scorched more than 273,000 acres. It's the largest wildfire in the country right now. According to the state of Oregon, fires and hotspots dashboard 21 homes and 54 other structures have been destroyed by it. At last check, the Boot Lake fire was 22% contained. Firefighters say the weather isn't making it easy for their crews, with winds spreading the flames up to four miles a day. We 
just continue to see day after day after day of conditions that are not in our favor. We currently have air tankers, helicopters, dozers, engines, over 1,700 personnel working this fire. Uh, so we certainly have uh, the resources that we need. As the bootleg fire spreads, people are stepping up to help those who've had to leave their homes. The nonprofit Project Spirit Horse Rescue says it's rescued more than 200 animals so far. And meanwhile, the Red Cross is focusing its efforts on helping people by providing shelter, food, and emotional support. Organizers say community groups and nonprofits have really stepped up during the fire. If Red Cross doesn't do it, somebody else does. The Red Cross is just one organization that provides support. Uh, when people are evacuated from wildfires or any other natural disasters. The Red Cross folks works with all the different government agencies that are involved and lots of other nonprofit organizations. We're told the animals are being held at the Klemeth Animal Shelter or Volunteer Homes. There is still a Red Cross shelter at the fairgrounds. If you want to make a donation to help, we've posted that information on our website, kptv.com. Now let's get a quick rundown on some of the other fires burning across the air region right now. The Darlene Fire, that's near Lapine in central Oregon. It's destroyed two homes, some RVs, and several outbuildings. Just yesterday, officials lowered evacuation orders. The fire has burned more than 680 acres. It is 35% contained. The Grandview Fire, burning near Sisters, has charred more than 6,000 acres. It is 31% contained. Hundreds of personnel are working the front lines of that one. Two injuries have been reported, but it's not clear who was hurt. And one of the newest fires burning is in the Umatilla National Forest, Northeast Oregon. The Elbow Creek Fire started Thursday, quickly exploded to 10,000 acres. There are evacuation orders in place for this one. Um, the Elbow Creek Fire is 0% contained. As concerns over the Elbow Creek Fire grow, the Oregon Department of Forestry decided to close the Umatilla National Forest to public use. The Winaha Wildlife Area is also closed at this time. Staff from there assisted forestry crews late last night, creating fire lines to protect housing and other structures. A park-wide fire ban is now in effect at Crater Lake. It's because of extreme risk for fire in the southern part of the state. No wood or charcoal fires will be allowed anywhere in the park. You can still use camp stoves, but only in areas clear of flammable material within five feet in all directions. The ban will stay in place until further notice. And the Umpqua National Forest is adjusting public use restrictions because of extreme fire danger there. Starting at 11.59 tomorrow night, and then staying in place until December 31st, the restrictions will be raised to level three. That means campfires will no longer be allowed anywhere in the forest, uh, including developed campgrounds on trails and dispersed campfire rings. But there is an exception for commercial stoves that use liquid fuel or propane. Viol violators can be fined up to $5,000. The rapid start to fire season is already affecting life outdoors, as we just told you. Could mean big changes to your summer plans, especially any camping trips or outdoor adventures. So we checked in with some local recreation groups. We talked to Mazamas, a Portland climbing group that plans climbs all over the state. They say they prepare for a lot of different weather events. But when it comes to wildfires, they say climbers need to take extra precaution, especially since things can change at a moment's notice. The Eagle Creek fire a couple years ago, people in flip-flops who were out on the trail just really expecting to saunter up a trail a mile or two and back, got stuck out overnight and ended up having to hike like 10 miles. The group says it's extremely important to bring food, water, and as she just mentioned, sturdy shoes when you go hiking. Always make sure someone knows where you are. They say it's also important to fill out self-issued permits if you see them at any trailhead. Another important thing to think about if you're heading out on an outdoor trip, make sure you know about any road closures. Sometimes roads can close if a fire spreads, so it's a good idea to have a backup plan just in case. All right, time now is 8.09. We want to get back over to... Um, Jeff Fortron. Yeah, uh, we've got some impressive video. This oh, wow. High resolution GO 17, a visible satellite imagery of the uh, bootleg fire that was burning, that is still burning, of course, but really took off again yesterday afternoon and evening. You can see that big smoke plume. What was going on at the surface was the fire was so hot that air gets so buoyant that it rises quickly. It creates what we call pyrocumulus clouds. Sometimes those develop into pyrocumulonimbus clouds. A couple of days ago, we saw lightning coming off of this particular 
particular fire, which is a dangerous thing. Uh, they can turn into firestorms, if you will. So this is uh, this has been going on each afternoon as the air becomes more unstable and as the vegetation dries out even further with the loss of that relative humidity or with uh, the lowering relative humidity. Let's go ahead and take you to the uh, fire perimeters map. Uh, you can see how big that fire is in South Central Oregon, the Bootleg Fire, the northern and eastern peripheries of the fire. That's where we're seeing the most hot spots detected by satellite imagery. Uh, so that is a prolific smoke maker. We're also tracking a few fires that are burning in northeast Oregon, uh, southeast Washington, and western Idaho. Uh, these have also been prolific smoke makers, uh, pouring smoke into the south and to the east, uh, specifically into northeast Oregon and into Idaho. So we've got the Lick Creek Fire right here and the Green Ridge Fire, which is a smaller fire to the southwest. The Lick Creek Fire has grown to 66,000 plus acres. It's 30 percent contained. Unfortunately, we saw a lot of hot spots on the southern periphery of that fire. Meanwhile, in northeast Oregon, we have the Elbow Creek Fire that's burned more than, or up to 10,000 acres. It's at zero percent containment. And the big complex fire, the Snake River Complex Fire, has grown to over 103,000 acres. It's at 31 percent containment. That is our second mega fire across the Pacific Northwest. Smoke is going to be pouring off of that Boot Lake Fire later on today. Upper level wind will send that smoke off to the northeast. So areas west of the Cascades will see another mostly clear day with good air quality. Unfortunately, though, that will not be the case across, say, eastern Oregon, Idaho, Montana, and parts of Washington. We have that marine layer overhead at our Shiloh Inns camera and seaside, and it's pretty wet out there. We've been seeing some measurable rainfall with some drizzle. Uh, sunny skies, though, from our Adventure Park at Ski Bowl camera. Looks like uh, the clouds will be diminishing as we get into the late morning and the early afternoon. Temperatures are likely to rise into the low 80s this afternoon in the interior valleys. 80s and 90s are expected across central and eastern Oregon. Uh, the warming trend continues through Sunday. We climb into the mid-80s Monday, but temperatures are going to be rather steady around the metro area Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Low 80s to mid-80s by Friday. Overnight lows should be in the 50s. This is an outstanding forecast. We just need some rainfall at this point. Deb, back to you. All right, Jeff, thank you. 812 now. When Good Day Oregon returns, caught on camera, a car flies over a highway. How police say that driver managed to get the car airborne. Plus, could mask mandates be making a return? The latest states to encourage mask wearing again, regardless of vaccination status.